This is an excellent example of how a carbon market under the right circumstances can be used to promote sustainable development and to help the poorest members of society. However, the extent of the contribution of the CDM to sustainable development is a point of debate. Over 80% of CDM credits generated in 2008 came from China. The majority of projects are at industrial scale, delivering limited benefits, therefore, to small communities. More work is required both within the UN climate change negotiations and directly with development partners to address some of these issues. The Australian government is strongly committed to expanding and improving flexible market mechanisms such as CDM to enhance the effectiveness of any new climate change agreement. Let me now turn to the other issue and spend a little time talking about RED, as you recall, reducing emissions from deforestation and forest degradation. RED presents a key opportunity for the carbon market to support action on climate change and sustainable development. And it's, a re it's an arena where Australia is at the forefront of global efforts. The Economist magazine recently summarised the case for RED in the following terms. Forests lock up a lot of carbon. Cutting them down accounts for around 20% of the world's emission of greenhouse gases. On paper, halting deforestation should be the simplest way to cut emissions. Achieving a similar reduction by building wind turbines or nuclear power stations or mandating more fuel-efficient cars and buildings would take years and cost billions. In practice, however, halting deforestation is hard. Much of the world's rainforest has already succumbed to loggers and farmers. This is because it's difficult to align the interests of people who live in forests with those of the rest of humanity. Moving on from the quote. Deforestation is uh, occurring rapidly in the tropics, as you all know. An estimated 13 million hectares are converted to other land use each year. When rainforest is cut or burnt for its wood, or to make space for grazing crops or urban development, greenhouse gases are released. As I mentioned, the destruction of forests produces almost 20% of global emissions. That in itself is more than the global emissions from all forms of transport combined, and comparable to the annual carbon dioxide emissions of the US or, or China. So if we're serious about reducing forest carbon emissions, we have to think of ways of making forests worth more standing than cut down. Forest carbon in developing countries is currently not included in the UN Climate Change Agreement. We believe it must be included in any new global outcome on climate change. Australia has proposed one way to do this through a forest carbon market mechanism. This proposal puts an economic value on activities that reduce emissions from the forest sector in developing countries. National governments will be issued with forest carbon credits for emission reductions that are below an internationally agreed national forest emission level, which takes existing emission reduction activities into account. We're also working to demonstrate practically how this can be done. Australia's uh, $200 million international forest carbon initiative that aims to demonstrate that RED can be part of an equitable and effective global climate change agreement. As part of this initiative, we've established collaborative forest carbon partnerships with both Indonesia and Papua New Guinea, and I'd like to talk about each. Both these countries are important as regional carbon sinks. Their loss, the loss of their forests accounts for a sizable proportion of global emissions. If the two countries can retain their forests, and reduce emissions, they have the potential to access finance from carbon markets. So we're trialling a range of approaches to demonstrate how investment in RED can achieve emission reductions while providing forest-dependent communities with livelihoods and promoting sustainable resource management. And that will provide benefits well beyond reducing greenhouse gas emissions. RED can reduce poverty by financing sustainable development. It can also protect the many endemic flora and faunal species in which these communities, in fact, the entire ecosystem depend. I've covered a lot today, and it's a complex topic, so can I very briefly sum up? Carbon markets do have the potential to support the dual benefits of allowing low-cost emission reductions while also supporting sustainable development. Progress has been made in recent years, but a lot of work needs to be done. Developing countries need to start planning their low-carbon futures and strengthen their ability to engage in carbon markets so they can better harness the opportunities presented. 
We need an improved global arrangement that scales up carbon markets in developing countries and includes a, a mechanism for RED with appropriate social safeguards. So finally, Australia can and does play a valuable role helping partner countries to position themselves for lower carbon growth. Australia will continue to work over time to demonstrate how the RED concept can work in practice. Thank you.